We French know the truth. The best food in the world is made in France. Francophilic propaganda is scored by an overture about Russia's victory over the French army. Confused yet? Also, anime narration. First of all, I'm a rat, which means life is hard. That's ratsist. I have a highly developed sense of taste and smell. But what is it that led to Remy's nose being so good? It can't be his love of food alone. There has to be a genetic reason or explanation, right? Turns out that funny smell was rat poison. Suddenly Dad didn't think my talent was useless. I agree that it was sudden. It was only 30 seconds ago that you were telling me about your talent and your dad not respecting it. Now here we are. And yes, that was fast. We gotta cook this! Now exactly how we cook this is the real question... Why are the rats only hanging around this one house? Is it really enough to sustain an entire colony? How the hell is this one elderly woman producing so much garbage? You think that maybe we shouldn't be so... Mother Nature goes caviezeling and these rats get blasted off a roof and into the plot propelling situation. Also, holy sh they survived that. She's gonna wake up. These guys tasted a thing and then decided it needed only saffron to be perfect. Then realized this lady had saffron, I think. Then decided to steal her saffron so they could experience the perfect bite and honestly this convoluted reasoning is flimsier than most Bugs Bunny cartoons. You... Read? Not sure if I should be more shocked at Remy reading or the brother only just now realizing Remy can read. Or even knowing what reading is. And the broken-hearted chef died shortly afterwards. He got his first bad review, then literally died from it. How sensitive was this dude? I've gotten hundreds of thousands of bad reviews, a few dozen hate mails, and two separate hand-drawn maps leading me to dangerous locations. But none of them has caused me to die of sadness. <laughs> Somehow, pulling the trigger on this gun opens the umbrella that's stuck in the barrel, because movie frequently forgets how to physics. Also, f***ing seriously, the sight of a couple rats causes Granny to immediately reach for the shotgun? She'd rather destroy her house in a rain of fire than, say, grab a f***ing broom? Damn, this old lady gun stores more impossible shells than an action movie villain. Ah! Evacuate! If these rats were all living in this woman's attic before now, that was not made clear. So Remy felt his dish needed saffron, and he robbed the old lady's house for it, which caused a chain reaction that led to the entire rat clan being washed away all the way to Paris. And none of that is ever addressed again! The movie wanted to get everyone to Paris and decided to show it to us, but it meant nothing. No one is mad at Remy when they meet up later on. Everyone adjusts fine to Paris. I suppose the old lady was snatched up by the EU's version of Medicaid and was probably lost or killed via negligence, but this whole opening is pretty meaningless. How the hell is that book readable after taking that long-ass trip in the storm sewer? My copy of Fifty Shades of Grey was ruined after I walked through the rain for one block. You don't have no guts! Holy sh did movie just seriously yada yada this confrontation at gunpoint? Is this a regular occurrence in Paris? Man, France is weird. This sequence of the camera following Remy as he explores Paris is awesome. Really worthy of a sin removal. But it makes me wonder how the hell Remy knows exactly where to go at all times without ever stopping to see which way to turn. All this time, I've been underneath Paris? Movie inadvertently writes the most salacious Gilmore Girls fan fiction ever. Also, luckily for Remy and the plot, he emerged directly on a perfect view of the city to confirm his location. I mean, it's better than an obvious title card, but still. Cousteau's? You've led me to your restaurant! Lottery odds? I mean, here is a rat that loves Gusteau's cookbooks, and suddenly finds himself swept into Paris, and right to the doorstep of Gusteau's. And this shit is so unrealistic, the Justice League mustache team sent a congratulatory fruit basket. I was, uh... My mother, uh... She died. That's right, kids, we've killed off two characters in the first 20 minutes of this movie. Jesus, even Die Hard didn't have this body count so soon. You've read my book. Let us see how much you know, huh? Which one is a chef? This entire scene of Remy identifying all the various kitchen workers, all very important, is purely expositional. Later on, this ghost is going to tell Remy he's not real, and Remy is talking to himself, so he's just proving to himself here how smart he is. But mostly he's letting the audience know. Movie notwithstanding, it takes a kitchen full of employees ignoring an entire station for several minutes in order for this magical plot-propelling soup to even begin to get made in the first place. Which is even more damning since Remy pointed out that this was the Saucier's workstation. Where'd the f***ing Saucier go, huh? Extended cigarette break? Oh, wait, this is France. Also, Linguini grabs this piping hot pot of soup with no ill effects. I guess he does have talent in the kitchen. I mean, I could say this at virtually any point in this movie, but how do all these assholes not notice this obvious rat? Man, this scene gets dangerously close to a bad Tom and Jerry episode. <laughs> Some rat Dude, all Linguini did was add some water, garlic, and leeks to the soup, so why is it immediately nauseating? Without soap, this act is meaningless. Even more so for rats than humans. Rats carry the f***ing plague, guys! He dumps that entire container of broth into his soup without any spills or issues. Even though the movie already showed, this soup was nearing the top of its container and would definitely overflow if a gallon of broth were poured on it. What are you playing at? I'd like to point out that this guy is basically the primary villain in this movie, but even he just immediately admits and accepts that this soup is rad. And a true asshole would have called it disgusting and refused to ever let Linguini cook again. 
Instead, this guy knows the soup rules, but he can't accept the fact that Linguini cooked it. Because he didn't. This guy gets a bad rap. I'm sending this movie for not making this villain more villainy. Also, I'm pretty sure a simple security camera would solve almost all this movie's conflict. Saucier would get fired for abandoning his station, and Linguini would keep his job as Garbage Boy once everyone saw the rat was the one that messed with the soup. Done and done. This is a modern movie, right? And one of the most famous high-end expensive restaurants in Paris. But no cameras? Not even to safeguard the expensive wines and other high-end ingredients. Responsible for it. I guess Linguini trained at the esteemed Mario Batali Culinary School. Run! Is this how you keep a restaurant at four stars? There's literally only a swinging double door separating you and the customers, and you are screaming. Wait, when did he punch a triangular air hole in this lid, and why? And does he just carry a f***ing can opener on his person at all times? Have you been nodding? Remy can understand English, but he can't speak. And we're all speaking English even though we're in Paris? Movie yada yada's over the solution to the language barrier here so hard that even six-year-olds came out asking their parents what the f*** was going on. I can't cook. Can I? Awesome! So we've immediately undermined the central premise of the movie by determining our secondary protagonist is unable to do what Gusto says anyone can do. Hey, they like the soup! <laughs> they like the soup. Linguini fell into the goddamn Seine River, survived it, found the jar that Remy was in, rescued him, and climbed out of the Seine in record time. Why can't we see that story? This uncoordinated asshat keeps losing jobs and can't do anything and has no money and lives in this tiny cramped apartment and you expect me to believe he takes up valuable kitchen shelf space with a goddamn soccer ball? Okay, back the f*** up. Beep, beep, beep. This whole apartment has this view? And this failure of a citizen can afford it? Good thing they both got a good night's sleep last night instead of trying to figure out any sort of plan for pulling off the ruse today. Recreate the soup. Take as much time as you need. All week if you must. Couldn't Skinner just demand the recipe? Or if he wanted to keep Linguini honest, wouldn't he just stand here and watch him make it? This is the culinary version of a Bond villain leaving him to die without doing it himself. This is not gonna work, little chef! I'm gonna lose it if we do this anymore! No one overhears Linguini screaming at the top of his lungs about the rat he brought into the restaurant. And before you say that he's in the walk-in and it would be soundproof, I'll remind you that Jack Torrance was able to easily communicate with multiple people outside of it in The Shining. I'm just familiarizing myself with uh, vegetables. One can get too familiar with vegetables, you know! This is actually a pretty good adult joke subtly thrown into a kid's movie, but it also means that at some point Skinner definitely stuck a cucumber up his ass. The whole rest of the movie kind of hinges on this, but this is some bull if something suddenly pulled two strands of your hair, the last thing you would do is raise both arms in unison with said hair strands. This sh takes so long to learn, I'm surprised it's not snowing outside already. Congratulations. You were able to repeat your accidental success. This is verbatim what my college girlfriend said to me after our second time having sex. Gusto makes Chinese food. Chai? <laughs> Easy. I haven't seen marketing this blatantly racist since H&M's last campaign. Also, I never understood this. Just because he became head chef at this restaurant, and even if he f***ing owns the restaurant, how did Gusto dying transfer the Gusto likeness rights to this f***er? There are only two ways to get Get first pick. Grow it yourself or bribe a grower. Um, actually, you guys accidentally witnessed LaRusso's weed deal. Tell them Chef Linguini has prepared something special for them. Something definitely off menu. I mean, I know Skinner's trying to get Linguini in trouble, but he's throwing the entire restaurant under the bus to do it, and why would he want him out anyway? His lawyer just told him it's better to keep an eye on him while he's on the staff. Don't mind me, I'm done gonna... I'm just... Okay, I've held it in as long as I can. The way Brad Bird creates Linguini's physical comedy is perfection, and it's worth two sins off, damn it. What is that? Special order! Look, I'm sure this is a great dish, but the entire f***ing restaurant's gonna order the same thing. Just based on looks, it looks like a goddamn pancreas covered in a brown sauce. It's kind of amazing Remy's shadow hasn't betrayed him before now. It is the City of Lights. Remy! A meal? Oh, I can't oh, believe it! You're alive! What I can't believe is that Remy is anywhere near the colony, considering the sewers split up just after they left the countryside. So there would be no f***ing way they'd both end up in Paris, especially anywhere near each other. Remy! Yeah. You are stealing! He's just now stealing. What about all that Linguini gave him for dinner. Have you ever had a pet rat? No. Did you work in a lab with rats? No. How is Linguini this cool about keeping his secret? He's a wreck in the best of circumstances. And if he's drunk, he would totally spill the beans. Hey, why do they call it that? What? Ratatouille. Roll rodents. I am deeply and truly offended by these musical instruments. Come with me. I got something I want you to see. You better come take a look at this cliche. What kind of shop would advertise their rat traps with actual dead f***ing rats hanging in the window? Is this an effective strategy? Like, do customers walk by and say, Well, I was just gonna let those fellas live, but I guess if those traps are that good, I've gotta buy one. Also, is this really an entire store that's dedicated to killing rats? This works even while he's sleeping? Wake up! Wake up! 
wake up! Even in a movie about an English understanding Michelin star worthy rat chef in Paris, this Linguini doesn't wake up crap is asking too much of my suspension of disbelief. He's up here. In your brain. Yeah, why is it so hard to talk to you? You don't have to talk at all. If you're that committed to telling Colette the truth, just take off your f***ing hat. Awesome, glad to see this badass female chef eventually fall for a forced kiss. Seriously, movie, you could have left this love story out with no difference to the overall movie. I realize you have a little coffin imagery going on, and that's fun, but who would build a room like this? There's nothing on any of these side walls but sound-reducing panels. And there's no functional reason for the size or shape of this office, which suggests the character just loved coffins and wanted a coffin office. And that takes the fun out of the imagery, much like the way I take the fun out of movies. Rat with hair and Linguini with willpower fight over the use of his arm. I originally wrote that as a description of the footage so our editors would know what I wanted here, but then I realized it perfectly summed up why this is stupid and annoying. I mean, does Linguini not realize that his hat fell off? Does he not care? I know he's in love and shit, but he also knows that Remy is the sole reason for his success. Hey, Remy! How you doing? Hey, the entire movie has been telling us that the Rat Clan doesn't give a shit about what they eat, and that Remy was the only outlier. So why would there be a big demand from the other rats about trying Remy's food? If Chef Answer Pants had any ideas, you think I'd be hocking barbecue over here? A microwave burrito? Yeah, or tooth, I say, toothpicking chicken? You know, 15% of this movie is Remy talking to figments of his imagination. Why would Linguini be filed with your will? This used to be my office. Classic not answering the question. You know, when you get down to it, Ratatouille is just an expanded episode of those Are You the Dad episodes on Mori. It takes this long for a motorized scooter to catch up with a goddamn rat. But why not just stay on the roof? There's no way for Skinner to get up there. And this is a boat. There's really nowhere to go. I know this is an interesting story, but is the ownership of a local restaurant really dominating front page news? How about promoting the dock worker strike? That seems important. Why the hell wouldn't Remy just ask Linguini for the food for his family? He's the f***ing owner now, right? They could supply the whole clan for very little overhead. I find her being a terrible, floppy, awkward skater, and Linguini, aka Prattfall Jones, being smooth as butter on skates, to be one of this movie's biggest and most insulting reaches. Some part of me just knew. The gusto part? Remy will now grab a tuft of hair on the left side of Linguini's body, but it will cause Linguini's right arm to make a movement. This is probably done because the right hand happens to be on the left side of his body right now, and it makes more visual sense to the viewer this way. But it's definitely wrong as far as how the movie has shown this to work. I will return tomorrow night with high expectations. Why'd you give Linguini the heads up? Isn't the whole thing with food critics that they sneak up on you? I thought they even wore disguises and You're stealing food? Well, how could you? I, I thought you were my friend! Jeez, how many times do we have to see the characters fight over a contrived reason before the movie's climax cliche? So Linguini's having nightmares about Ego's visit, because, you know, he and the rat are on the outs. And somehow, despite having physically done all the acts of cooking and watching it all with his eyeballs, he apparently never picked up any actual know-how. Tell him to hit me with his best shot. Never a good look for a critic to set his opinion prior to experience in the thing he's here to critique. This would be like Leonard Moulton strolling into a screening of Ant-Man and the Wasp, barking out a let's get this shit over with. I will have whatever he is having. Um, this disguise and fake voice would not fool a single person that works here at the restaurant where this guy was the boss for a long time. <laughs> How does this get solved if the car isn't conveniently parked under several freestanding gargoyles? I realize France has a lot of gargoyles, compared to America at least. But goddamn, are they everywhere? These are the most convenient gargoyles ever. And Disney made a movie with gargoyles that were sentient. I seriously think Betty Crocker has a solid copyright infringement case against the publishers of Gusto's cookbook. They used blue instead of red and added some fleur-de-lis, but in terms of design elements, it's an open and shut case. Holy shit, this dude gets a raw ass deal in this movie. Getting punished just for doing his job. He's treated worse than David Paymer in Ocean's 13. Maybe the rats will rig a slot machine or something as compensation at the end of the movie. Cute visual, but again, the problem with rats in the kitchen isn't literal dirt. It's disease and bacteria, but whatever. This moment is the best of Pixar encapsulated. Pure joy for the character translates as pure joy for the viewer. See Illumination? You don't have to rely on f***ing fart jokes in a kid's movie. Once and off. The following day, his review appears. Jesus, he was there until after closing. No way a dude that old works on a deadline that early. In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. Damn, this is our third f***ing narrator in this movie. We thrive on negative criticism which is fun to write and to read. Dude just unknowingly wrote our mission statement. Well, we had to let Skinner and the health inspector loose. And somehow never encountered any legal or ethical issues for abusing and imprisoning them. Ha ha ha, what a ripping good yarn that abduction story is. Ha ha ha. Which one would you like? Surprise oh, me. And rats were never considered vermin again and swarmed into kitchens around the world. The end. I got this rat, this annoying, heating f***ing rat. What I say is true. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Oh, 
pure poetry. Left without looking and tumbled into the sand. Damn, yeah, but bacon tastes good. Pork chops taste good. Hey, sewer rat may taste like pumpkin pie, but I'd never know because I wouldn't eat the filthy motherfuckers. <laughs> Just make me a fucking failure pile in a sadness bowl. That's what I want. Well, dad gave me a job. Queen. Hey, why am I the poop checker? I'm kicking my ass, do you mind? Creamy, salty, sweet, and oaky nuttiness. It was jammy, plummy, dense, and chewy. As a CinemaSense fan, you clearly know a thing or two about high-quality entertainment. But have you ever considered working in the entertainment industry? A job in entertainment is about what you know, and who you know. At Full Sail, you'll not only gain knowledge and hands-on experience, but you'll also connect with other students and successful grads. Full Sail is committed to hands-on education. That means going beyond sitting in a classroom and flipping through a textbook. It means putting yourself in real-world scenarios, because that's how you learn the skills you'll actually use on the job. You can study online or attend their sunny Florida campus. And best of all, Full Sail offers accelerated degree programs. The sooner you graduate, the sooner you'll get a chance to kickstart your career and put your education to work. Full Sail specializes in entertainment, media, technology, and the arts. This blend has produced a community of inspired and creative people who push each other to do amazing things. Full Sail grads helped engineer Kendrick Lamar's latest record, animate Steven Spielberg's latest movie, and design the latest Call of Duty game. If you've got the dream and the drive, one day we could be sitting your movies. Go to fullsail.edu slash cinemasins to learn more.